Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Crossfire Worship Center. So glad you're joining us for this Sunday service. Uh, we're going to get into the Word of God today. We're going to continue in a series on the Christian life. But before we do that, I just want to invite you to come and join us for one of our services. We meet at 187 Kilbride every Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning, and we'd love to meet you and have you join us for one of our services. And there you'll get the full experience of the praise and worship and everything and the fellowship in that. So we hope to see you one day. All right, so we're going to get into the Word of God this morning, uh, but before again we do that, let's get into a moment of prayer here as we begin this service. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you we can be gathered here together uh, just to come into worship you and to come in one spirit, Lord God, get around your word, to be fed on your word. Uh, we just pray, Lord God, for ears to hear, to give us a heart that is receptive to your word, to not just also be hearers of the word, but to be doers of your word. So Father, we also ask that you do within us and change us where we need to be changed. We give you thanks for that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So again, we're on the Christian life. We've been on this for a little while now. This is lesson six of this series. And uh, there's been two sections to this series so far. Uh, the first section, we were dealing with the benefits of salvation. And we we're looking at what really takes place as a person comes to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now in this second section, we've been talking about now how how we are to live as a believer. So once a person comes to salvation, how are they now to live? And so we've looked up at four points up to this, up to, up to this time, and you can go back in the, in the past uh, teachings and you can see what was taught there. But today we're getting into point five, uh, and we're going to be talking about your walk as a believer uh, should be Christ-like in the workplace. So again, your walk as a believer should be Christ-like in the workplace. And I think that this is something that is really important. Again, we're dealing with the basics of Christianity. And we must uh, know that as a Christian, when we come to faith in Jesus Christ, that we do represent Jesus Christ. We're his representatives. We're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're not just Christians when we're in church, but we're Christians wherever we go. And we represent Christ wherever we go. So even when we're in the workplace, we must remember that we're representing him. And, you know, when people see us, especially if we're going around telling everybody we're a Christian, well, they're going to be looking at you. And this is the picture, the image of, of what, the, you know, what they're going to have of what a Christian is or what Christ is like. And so it's important how we act and how we behave in the workplace. So, our walk as a believer should be Christ-like in the workplace, okay? So Ephesians chapter 6, you can turn your Bibles there with me, Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to look at verses 5 through 8, and there it says, Bond servants, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart as you would Christ. Not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart rendering service with a good will as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, um, does this he will receive back from the Lord, whether he's a bondservant or if he is free. Masters, do the same to them, and stop your threatening, knowing that he who is both their master and yours in heaven, and that there is no partiality with him. Okay, so as we look at this passage here, in Ephesians 6 and um, chapter 6, verses 5 to 8, uh, this is dealing with how the, whether, uh, whether it's an employee or an employer, okay? It's, it's dealing with both. So he speaks to the employee and the employer as to how we should be behaving in the workplace. And it teaches us how we are to work, work and act in the workplace and how we are to treat others in the workplace. Now, again, as I was saying, being a Christian is to be a follower of Christ, and we are to be following the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when we came to salvation, 
Uh, we're told in the book of Romans that we were predestined to be conformed to the image and the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that means that we were to become just like him. Now that doesn't mean that we become God or deity, or anything like this. What it means is that we take on his character traits. And so we love like he, he loved. We're gentle, we're kind and everything just like he is. We represent him. We represent the things that he teaches, the represent the things that he, he stood for in that. And so we put those things into practice and we become like the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we take on his character, we act like him, we talk like him, and we do what he did, okay? So now the idea is, is that this takes place in ev every area of our lives. When we eat at home with our family, we're out with our friends, we're visiting uh, relatives, sitting in class at a school, playing sports, you're sitting around with your teammates, whatever it is, and wherever you go, you act in this Christ-like manner. And so it is the same when you go into the workplace. So the idea here is that we, you know, Christianity isn't just something, it's not a mask we put on, we don't put on this act every once in a while when it's necessary and then we act completely different the rest of the time no if we are christians then we then there is a transformation there's a change that takes place and a christian is who i become okay i'm a follower of christ i'm, I'm christ-like i act in a new way i don't behave the way i used to behave and i represent jesus i don't just represent him again in the church service but i represent him everywhere i go now, most Christians, they have no problem doing this in the church. We all know when we get into the church service, when we're amongst other believers, we know how we're to act, okay? We know how Christians are supposed to act. And we know the language. We know everything, okay? And we, and we have no problem acting that out in church, but when we leave church and we go back to our lives and the other areas that we go, all of a sudden we begin to, to behave different. And we know how the world acts, we know how the world behaves, and it seems like when we're in the world, we act like the world, and when we're in the church, we act like the church, okay? But the thing is, is that if, again, what I'm saying is that if we are truly born again, followers of Christ, disciples of Jesus, then we're learning from him, and the idea is that we're trying to become like him. This is the thing, we're growing, we're maturing, we're being conformed to the image and the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. So again, no matter where I go, who I'm with, what I'm doing, I am Christ-like in that, okay? So no, again, so whether I'm friends, whether I'm with family, whether I'm schoolmates, you know, um, teammates, whatever it is, you know what, I behave in a certain way. I behave in a Christ-like manner and I represent Christ. So we're dealing with here in the workplace right now, whether you're an employee or an employer, you must act Christ-like in the workplace. So the first thing that we're told in verse 5 is that if you're an employee, you are to, to obey your masters or your employer. So whether you work for a small business, a large corporation, your employer provides a job for you. Your employer enables you to make money for yourself, your family. It allows you to con contribute to society by producing product or services for others. It gives you a sense of purpose and responsibility and satisfaction in life, okay? This is the things that a job does, and your employer provides that job for you. It allows you to live in this world. It allows you uh, to have a job where you're earning an income, where your needs can be provided for. For you, you can provide the needs for yourself. You can provide the needs for your family. You have food. You have shelter, and and, and the needs that you have—a car, whatever it is. Okay, so. Now, again, employees are to obey their masters or their employers. So when you sign up for a job and you go apply for a job and you get that job, there are certain things that you have been hired for. There's a task. There's a job you've been hired for. And now you are required to do that job. And there's certain pay that comes with it. So we pay you X amount of dollars to do this job. You sign up for it. You either agree to it or not. And now when you agree to it, accept that job, what do you need to do? You need to follow through. And now you need to fulfill your side of the agreement to say that, yes, I will do this. And then you get paid X amount of dollars for that. So one thing we're supposed to do is obey our 
employers in the workplace. And you know, there's so much of this that is going on today where people feel that they are entitled. Uh, there's a lack of respect for their employers, their supervisors and managers. They don't feel that they have to listen to them today. Um, you know, we, we'll, we'll tell you how to run the company. We'll tell you what we should get paid. And you know what? If I don't want to do that, I'm not going to do that. Now, that is the wrong attitude. And if you're a Christian, you've got that type of attitude. You need to stop that because you are a representative of Jesus Christ. And you need, as the Word of God says, to obey your employers, to obey your supervisors, your managers in this. You need to do what they instruct you to do. And so when an employer gives you a job that provides these benefits and opportunities, you are obligated to follow his or her instructions. Only as you and your employer work together in a cooperative spirit can the company produce or generate its product or service for the community and guarantee you a job. So it benefits both of you. So when you are following your employer and doing what the employer says, it helps the company. Producing product, selling product, um, you know, providing services for people that they need. And in return is people love your product, love your services, they, they come back, and it continues to keep you employed. So you and your employer are working together so that you, you all have work and that you're, you can make a living in this world. And so your job should be important to you. Your employer, you should respect your employer and follow the instructions that they give you, Okay. Now, this goes into the next part of this in verse 5, because it tells us that we are to work with an attitude of respect and of fear. Now, this doesn't mean working with the fear of man, uh, nor with total unquestioning obedience, but with the fear of God in your heart. You see, fear and respect are to be the marks of a Christian worker. Our employer has hired us, again, to do certain job. And if we agree to do it, we signed up for it, we were hired for it, then we need to do it. We need to respect them. And when they ask us to do certain things, require a certain task of us, we need to respect them. And we need to do that job. And we need to do it the best that we can. Okay, And we need to do it in the fear of God. We need to do it as if you know, God is our employer. God is the one who's given me this job, and I'm working unto you. So that's the way I need to work and treat my job and my employer as if I'm doing it unto God, okay? So again, we are to respect and fear God lest we perf perform some irresponsible work and bring reproach upon his holy name. Now you have to remember that. Your attitude and your behavior in the workplace is going to reflect on your God, because if people know that you're a Christian and you're, you're very vocal about it, you know, they're going to be watching now your attitude. They're going to be watching your behavior. They're going to be watching how you work. And so what you can do is you can either bring glory to your God or you can bring shame to your God. And of course, as us as Christians, we want to bring glory to God. So when we're in the workplace, we should keep that in mind and we should do our job to the best that we can. And so what we must do is we must respect our employees by following his instructions, lest our attitude or our performance, poor performance that is, brings a rebuke or a loss of our job, okay? Because how sad is that? If, if a Christian loses their job because of poor performance, a bad attitude, whatever it is, you know, they lose that job, they get fired, whatever it is, and, you know, that's the talk that's going on. Oh, yeah, that Christian guy, you know, man, that guy had a bad attitude. And, and it reflects on your God. It brings shame to his name. So you always have to keep that in mind. So what, how should a Christian act in the workplace? Well, they need to respect their employer. They need to do their job as if they're doing it unto God, okay? And do that job to the best of their ability. So this means that you need to be punctual. That means you show up on time. Okay, you don't leave early either. If you're required to work till four o'clock, you don't stand before that punch clock 10 minutes, 15 minutes before you punch out. No, you work right till that time, right till four o'clock, and then you go and swipe out. Uh, you be a good employee, okay? You're always showing up, you have good attendance. This shows that you're responsible. It shows that you're loyal, that you're a trustworthy. When you show up on time, when you show up all, every day, and then what do you do? You have to work hard at your job. Do your job and do it well. 
You know, when I'm when I look even in in ministry, there are many people who who want to serve in the church. They want positions in the church, but then you you watch them; they're never there. They're always late. Okay, they never help out with anything, but yet they want the top positions all the time. Well, what does that tell you? They're not fit for those positions. The ones I'm going to look for, the ones who are punctual, the ones who are there all the time, who are there every day, the ones who are not making excuses all the time, the ones who, who like to help out. You know, and these are the ones you're going to look to because these are the ones who are responsible. These are the ones who are trustworthy. These are the ones who you're going to be able to count on. Okay? So these, are very, these things are really important. Now again, these may be some things you know already because we're talking about some basic things concerning the Christian life. But there are many of you who are not putting these things into practice. You may know these truths. You may have heard these things before, but you're not putting them into practice. And so I'm, I'm trying to urge you and encourage you today to begin to change that and be a good representative of Jesus Christ in the workplace. And then he goes on in verse 6. And he says that you're not only to work hard uh, when your boss or your supervisor is looking, um, in, you know, to win their approval or their favor, okay? So what he's referring to here is that, um, again, here, let me read it from, the, from verse 6. It says, not by way of eye service, okay? So again, you're supposed to do the end of verse 5 with a sincere heart as you would Christ. So work with a sincere heart, working as to Christ, not by the way of eye service, as, as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ doing the will of God. So when he's talking about eye service, what he's talking about is when your employer is around or your supervisor is around, you see them coming, you see they're around, oh, I better work hard now. And now you start working hard, you try and act like you're the best employee, you really care for your job, you're working hard and you're doing your best that you can. But the moment that they walk away, they leave or whatever, you're like, okay, time to shut her down, just relax again, take it easy, just do as little as I can. You know, just <laughs> put my time in here. You know, that's a wrong attitude, okay? Um, so you, what you want is you want the favor, okay? You want them to think uh, that you're this great hard worker and you want the favor that comes with it, the benefits that come with it. In, or, in other words, either you want, you want better positions, you want better pay, but yet you're a lazy worker. But when they're around, you try to pretend that you're this great worker that should receive more. Well, that's wrong. That's, that's lying. And God doesn't bless that. And so when the Christian is in the workplace, what do they do? They, they work hard all the time. Whether that employer, supervisor, manager is around or not, you do your job and you do it well. Because again, you aren't just working for your employer. You're working for God and God sees what you're doing. And so God is the one who can promote us. God can also bless us. He can make sure that our hard work goes, doesn't go unnoticed, but that it's recognized. And so we have to remember he's watching all the time. So we do these things as though we are doing it unto God. Now, there is nothing wrong with trying to gain approval of your employer. There's nothing um, wrong with wanting to be noticed for your hard work. But there are, again, those who slow down when the employers aren't looking and they speed up when their employers are looking. So these people are seeking favor that they don't deserve. And such actions are untruthful. They bring shame to the name of Christ. And so we must follow then what verse 7 says. And verse 7, what it says is, it says, rendering service with a good will as to the Lord and not to man. So again, it's there. Again, you have to recognize that you're, you're working for the Lord. You have to do your job as if you're doing it unto him, okay? So um, another good verse here that we should look at and um, consider here is Titus chapter 2 and verses 9 to 10 and see what it says to us concerning this. Titus chapter 2 and verses 9 to 10. And it says there, bond servants are to be submissive to their own master. So bond servant and masters. Again, we could say employee, employer. Bond servants are to be submissive to their own masters in everything. They are to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. So this verse here 
we as Christians are to be the best employees doing what our employers require of us. And we are to do it well. We are to submit to them, to submit to their leadership, to their direction, and their, their, to their instructions. We are to show respect to them. We're not to be talking back to them. I remember when I used to work in the workplace, I used to see this all the time. Um, you know, I was... Um, a team leader of, of my department, and there are other team leaders in different departments in this area. And I used to see people, you know, talking to their team leaders and telling their team, le- team leaders how the job should be done and what we should be doing and this and that, and not listening to the instructors, the instruction of those who were above them. Rather, they, they were disrespectful and rather telling their, their superiors what they should be doing and how the job should be done, how they should be running. That's not what you are hired for. You are hired to do a job. You are hired to listen to the instruction of your employer and to do what they're telling you to do. This is the reason why they hire you. But there's a lot of disrespect that goes on today. People don't know how to respect their superiors today. They don't know how to submit to them. They don't know how to respect them today. And you as a believer need to do this because the Word of God is instructing you to do this. So you need to show respect. Don't talk back to them. And then also it tells us don't steal from your employer. Show that you are trustworthy. Uh, You're good. Um, and, And... And, you know, so you don't want to rip them off, okay? You don't want to be stealing from them and and ripping them off. These things happen all the time. You know, you have product or you have certain office equipment, whatever it is, you know, things around you, pens, pencil staplers, whatever it is, um, you know, and you just think, oh, you can just take whatever you want. You think that it's yours. Ah, It doesn't matter if I take a few pens. What's a few, few pens? Okay, I um, I used to work in a window manufacturer, and and so there was this window cleaner and that people used to take cans of that stuff all the time. Okay, and and that's stealing from the company. Okay, they didn't buy it for you to take it home. Okay, if you ask if you can have a can, they say yeah, go ahead. That's one thing, but just to go ahead and take it as if it's yours, no, that's stealing. You're robbing the the employer. You're robbing. Uh, your company. Now, we're not to do that. We're to work honestly, okay? Now, here's the other thing that, you, that you know, if, if we follow these things, we, you know, we follow what God's saying. We respect them. We submit to them. We don't steal from them. We work hard. We're punctual. We're on time. We do our job as if we're doing it unto the Lord. Then what is going to happen is they're going to recognize your behavior, They're going to notice this Christ-like behavior, and this may just attract them to the Lord, okay? Showing, it says in verse 10, not pilfering, but showing all good faith so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior. So this might even attract them to Christ. This might give you an opening to share your faith. Look at this guy. He says he's a Christian. He follows Christ. Man, this guy's this is my best employee. Always on time. He's respectful. He doesn't talk back to me. He doesn't argue with me. He's not swearing and cursing at me like everybody else is. There's something different about this guy. And I like what I see. And so this may attract them to Christ. You know, you ever wonder why? You know, you try to share Christ or you talk to people about your faith and they don't want to hear a word of it. Maybe it's just because you've got a bad attitude and maybe you're not representing Christ well. But if we would follow the word of God, the instruction of the word of God, maybe we'll begin to start attracting people to Christ. So we need to have that Christ-like behavior even when we're in the workplace, okay? Now, back to Ephesians again. Back to Ephesians chapter 6, and we go to verse 8 now. And in verse 8 it says, Knowing that what, whatever good anyone does, he will receive back from the Lord, whether he is a bondservant or whether he is free. Okay? So many of us, we all want God's blessing. Okay, you hear this from Christians all the time, and you know it as a preacher. Uh, people just want blessing, blessing, blessing. Then if you preach on the blessing, you preach on how God is going to prosper them, bless them, and give them everything they want. Oh, they're shouting and they're cheering. But when you teach them things like this, they're silent. Okay? <laughs> but everybody wants blessing. Um, but we don't always act in a way that will bring the blessing. 
okay? Obedience is what brings the blessing. When you're obedient to the Word of God, you follow the instruction of the Word of God, the blessing is going to be present because the Word of God will always lead you into what is good and what is right, and therefore it brings a blessing. So if we want the blessing of God, then we need to follow what God commands us to do. Now you're going to receive from God exactly what you've put into your work. So if you put hard work and, and you know you do everything right, you're good representative there, that company is going to bless you. You're going to see, you're going to get raises, or you may begin to get moved up there because you're going to stand out from the rest, so you'll begin to get rewarded. But if you've been careless, negligent, or slack in your work, then you're going to re receive what? A limited reward. Because if that is what is being recognized and noticed, you're not going to go anywhere. People wonder why I can't get ahead in life. Well, watch how you're acting. Watch what your behaviors are doing. Are you acting in a way that is going to track that blessing? Is that is going to uh, cause your employer to want to pay you more or to promote you to another position? Or are you acting in a way where you're just going to remain stationary and when, where you're expendable too, where it doesn't matter if you're here or not, where they don't care whether you, you work for them anymore? Um, you know, you want to be a blessing to that workplace because then you work hard, you do these things, you're going to be blessed, okay? Now, in verse 9, he now gives the instructions to the employers. So first, uh, from verses 5 to 8, he's talking to the employee. Now he's going to refer to the employer. And he says, Masters, do the same to them and stop your threatening, knowing that who is both their master and yours in heaven, and that there is no partiality with them. So God doesn't see any difference between the employee and the employer. He shows no partiality. And so what is the employer to do? The employer is given two commands here. First, they're to do the very same things that are required of their workers. So just as we talked about working hard, being punctual and respectful and all this, you know, same thing. Employers are to do that. They're to be respectful, respect their employees, treat them kindly, nicely. Um, they should be a good example to their employees. Be there on time. Be there all the time. Work hard and all that, okay? Um, so this means that you're to treat your employees just as you expect them to treat you. So anybody who's a manager, supervisor, employer, okay, you have your own business, whatever, and you have people under you, people who you employ, you need to treat them right. You need to treat them in this way. You treat them the way that you expect them to treat you. And so you're to manage those under you with respect and with the fear of the Lord. And you're to run your business as though you're running God's business. So again, just those employees, Christian employees are to work as though they're working for Christ. You run your business as though it is also God's business. Now, the second thing he says to the employers is that they are to not threaten their employees. Now, this does not mean that you can't correct or you can't discipline your employees or that you can't uh, release them. If they haven't done the job, they haven't been diligent, they haven't been loyal, or they've done something that requires you to let them go. That doesn't mean you can't do that. You can, okay? But what it does mean is that you need to carefully guard against unwarranted threats because you have a master in heaven also who sees all. He sees whether you're being honest, whether you're being just, you're treating your people right or not. Therefore, any threats made should always be carefully and justly made made, always giving the employee the chance to correct themselves, okay? So you just don't go and threaten them with their jobs just for any old reason. But if they have had poor attendance, they've been late all the time, and they rarely show up and all this, well, you can start, yeah, uh, giving them warnings, saying, look, here's warning number one. If you continue this behavior, we're going to eventually let you go, okay? So it has to be justified, okay? They have to be justly made, okay? Just don't do it for any reason, holding this over their head that, hey, you know, um, it, 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 like acting in an unjust way, just threatening them with their jaws for any old reason, okay? Uh, you need to treat them right, and you need to treat them good, okay, as your employees. So this is how, um, whether you're an employee or an employer, 
are to act in the workplace. So we're to take the Word of God, right? The Word of God. We're not just to be hearers of the Word. We're to be doers of the Word. So it means what we hear, what we learn, we are to apply. So those things we all need to begin to practice in our workplace. And if you put those things into practice, then watch how God is going to bless you in your workplace or your business, okay? So very important to keep those in mind. Put those things into practice, okay? That's what this is all about, learning so that we can apply these truths, okay? Now there's one more point that I want to go into today before we we conclude this message, and this is point six. Now here's, here's the title put. You are to stay away from idle from the idle and the irresponsible. Okay, this is this is a this is a bit of a strong one here. Okay, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter three. Turn your Bibles there, and we're going to be looking at verses ten through fifteen. So again, Second Thessalonians three, verses ten through fifteen, and it says, "For even when we were with you, we would give you this command: if anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat." For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Not such, now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. And then he goes on, starting in verse 13, he says, As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in your doing good. If anyone does not obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and have nothing to do with him, and that he may be ashamed. Do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. Okay, this is a, this is a powerful um, verse here. This is a really important verse because there's a lot of this that is going on uh, today. Now this passage here, now listen to, the, listen to this, this passage deals with a very relevant subject for our day and our time. The problem of idle, unproductive, and irresponsible people. Many workplaces are full of employees who waste time and do as little as possible. Workers who are men-pleasers working only when they see the employer or the supervisor around. But in addition to these, there are increasingly large numbers in society who could be working but choose not to because they are lazy and indifferent. And sadly, they have found a way to exploit or take advantage of other people. Now, we're talking here, workplace, we're talking about people who are in the world, but this is also happening in the church. I, also, I already mentioned a little bit of that. There's people who do absolutely nothing, people who don't show up, people who are not punctual, give excuses for every little thing, but they want the positions. Well, they're not fit for those positions. You've got to prove yourself. And, and so here, again, you know, you have other people, even as, as minister in the church, again, you have people who are lazy, who don't even want to work, never mind serving in the church, but they don't want to work for a living. You know, they hear testimonies from people about how God has blessed them. You know, I've had it in my life where, where people have come and, and just blessed me and given me, you know, large sums of, of money at times just to bless me and help, help me and my family out. And we appreciate that. But in no way does that mean I should stop working and just, hey, I can do nothing and God is going to, you know, bring this money to me. Other people, you know, we give in testimonies of just when you were in need, something broke down or whatever it was, all of a sudden somebody just came and blessed you. There was money that all of a sudden when you need it, there's, our, there's many testimonies like that. But you see, those blessings like that are not the norm. They're the exception. They are there. God blesses us when there's times of need. But no way does this mean that we should not work. Okay, that means that we can just sit around. Money's just always going to come to me. Somebody's always going to appear and knock on my door and say, here, the Lord told me to give this. Now, we know of testimonies like that. But again, that's the exception, not the norm. God says that we are to, to work, okay? So what do these verses say to the idle and the irresponsible? Now, again, I also want to say this. If you feel you're called into ministry even, there's so many. Now, uh, if, if your ministry can't, su um, can't support you, then what do you need to do? You need to work. You need to be a bivocational minister until the ministry can support you, okay? But you have to work and provide for, for, your, 
for your needs, okay? So don't just sit around, well, the Lord's called me into this, and so I'm just going to wait around and the Lord's going to provide. No, you can work until that ministry gets going and it's big enough where it can support you, okay? Now, what do these verses say to the idle and the irresponsible? First, it says those who don't work, they don't eat. Now that is very clear, okay? Those who are unable to work and don't lose their, okay, listen to this. So those who are able to work and don't, they lose their right to eat and to be helped and to be supported by other people. So if you are able to work, but you're just lazy, you don't want to do it, and you expect that God's just going to bless you, you don't, you don't have the right to eat or to be helped or supported by other people. This is a command from God's word. The lazy are not to be supported. This verse is not referring to those who are truly unable to work due to disability, because there are some people who just can't work. Something has happened to them, okay, where they, they have disabilities and they can't work. Well, then they need some help, okay? Whether it's, it's welfare from the government or there's, you know, at times where the church steps in and helps them out or a friend just comes and helps them and bless them, blesses them. You know, those are people who need help, okay? That's, those are, that's legit. But... If you, it's just you just don't want to work, you're too lazy, then God says you starve, okay? And you don't deserve the help and the support of other people, okay? So if you are able to work, you are to work. If your excuse is that God's called me to ministry, as I've mentioned already, then keep working until the ministry can support you. If you can work and you refuse to work, you are not to be fed. And you are not, listen to this, you are not allowed to exploit your family, your community, your society, your neighbors, your church, or your government, okay? If you are able to work, then you are not to exploit them, okay? There is no excuse not to work. If you're able to work, then you work, okay? This is, you know, there's no excuse. This, this, the Word of God is commanding the person to work, okay? You must work. This is how you support yourself. This is how you support your family. This is how your needs are met. And this is an avenue through which God can bring blessing into your life as well. Now, secondly, he says to those who are idle and to those who are um, irresponsible, he says, those who are idle, they tend to be busybodies. And this is so true. You know, I, I, I see this all the time. Rather than using their minds for good, for positive and productive things, they use it to stir up trouble in people's lives or in churches. Do this all the time. There is a saying that an idle mind is the devil's playground or his workshop, and that is definitely true. So what happens is these busybodies, they concern themselves with other people's business and they stir up trouble. They start to gossip. They start to spread rumors. And why? Because they aren't busy working to provide for themselves. Okay, their time isn't being taken up with work. Their minds aren't busy on their work. Okay, they're not providing for their families. They're not providing for themselves. They're not serving their church. And so they don't help the work of God. These people are just lazy. They don't do nothing, but yet they gossip, they spread rumors, and they cause trouble. Okay, so much of that, that goes on today. And this is the Word of God. The Word of God is exposing this. These things aren't right. So if we have people in, in, in the church even who, who are lazy, they don't want to work, they're causing problems, you know, busybodies and all this, hey, we are not obligated to feed them. We're not obligated to help them according to the Word of God. He says they don't eat, okay? Now, there's something else that he says about these ones. He says that they are to be disciplined, he says, the body of Christ, look at what it says. The body of Christ, we are to discipline him. He says, if anyone does not obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and have nothing to do with them, that he may be ashamed. Don't regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. Okay? So discipline has to come. The body of Christ is to correct these people and tell them that they are to work and not be busybody stirring up trouble. And of course, a lot of them will not like this. They'll get angry with you and they'll start spreading things about you and all that stuff. Okay, that's just part of it. And so 
uh, if they don't receive the correction, if they don't receive the discipline, then what we are to do? We're to withdraw from them. We are to break fellowship with them. And so uh, the reason we are to correct them and to break this fellowship, the Word of God says, is so that they can feel shame for what they have done and repent. That this way they can correct things. They can do things right. They can go to work, make a living. They can stop the gossiping, the rumors, and just spending all their time stirring up trouble. Get to work, be busy, do something good with their money. And so this is the reason why we're to break fellowship with them, because one thing is they're sinning against God, because God commands us to work and to not be these busybodies. Um, And so if they refuse to do this and they continue on in their sin, then we break fellowship, okay? But he also said to this that you're not to to hate these people, okay? You're not to come against them. Um, The exact word that it said was that um, it says... Uh, have nothing to do with him, that they not be ashamed. Don't regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. So they're not enemies. They're still brothers. You have to remember that. But they need discipline. They need to be corrected. They need fellowship needs to be broken so that they can feel the shame and then they can recognize that they do need to repent and do what is right. They can come to acknowledge that what they're doing is sinful and it's not right in the sight of God. You know how many Christian people in the churches you know, they're deadbeat dads, deadbeat mothers, whatever it is. They don't work. They're lazy. They don't even provide for their children. They don't even take their responsibility for their children. But yet they want the blessings of God. They expect God to bless them. Sorry, God is not going to bless you. You're living in sin. And you need to repent, and you need to do what is right first. Get your life back in order. Get it right in the sight of God. And then he can begin to bless you. Okay? So th- this, is, this, is a, this is so important, okay? So what does God want? God wants us to act in a Christ-like manner, as we looked at today, in the workplace. No matter where we go, we represent Christ. We do our jobs well to the best of our ability. We do it as unto the Lord. We respect our employers. We don't argue with our employers. We're not just working when they're looking, you know, and then slacking off when they're not. No, we do our job to the best that we, of our ability, and you know, this may even gain their interest in Christ where we can begin to share the gospel with them. And we'll, we'll see that God is going to bless us for that. Another thing is, is if we can work, we are to work. We're not to be lazy. If you won't work and you can work, then, then don't expect to eat, God says. And don't expect the help from other people because no one is obligated to help you. If there are people who are sick, who can't work and obvious reasons, well, then yes, they get the help, Okay. But if you're just lazy and you're a busybody, then if you aren't going to repent of that and get right, then fellowship needs to be broken with you, okay? I've had discussions with this with certain people, and they just say, well, I don't believe that. I don't agree. I don't believe that that's what the Word of God says. Well, it's right there. It's plain. It's clear. You want to refuse the Word of God, I have to break fellowship. That's the way it works, okay? So all of us, Again, we want to experience the blessing of God in our lives. And if we are truly believers, then we want to do what is right in the sight of God. If you follow and obey the teachings from Scripture, God is going to reward you. God is going to bless you, and people will be one to Christ as well. You're going to have a good testimony before people. You're going to be a good representative of what a Christian is what a Christ-like follower is. To a lost and dying world, they'll see what it means to be a Christian. So what I want to leave you with here as well is remember you're a Christian, you're a follower of Christ. This isn't just in the church, but everywhere you go, you represent Christ. So do it well. Obey the scriptures. Again, don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. Do what God says and watch how he blesses you. Amen. Praise God. Well, I pray that that message uh, helped you, uh, gave you something to think about. Now let's take these truths of the Scripture and let's begin to apply them in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time today together to study your Word. We thank you for the truths of the Scripture. We thank you for what we've received here today. Father, even though some of these things may be hard for some of us to accept and to hear, Um, we can't argue with you. This is your truth. This is your word. 
And Lord God, uh, if there's anything that needs to be corrected in our lives, Father, I pray that we would repent of it and we would correct it. We would receive your discipline, get in line with you. And Father, I, and as we do, Lord God, experience, begin to experience your blessing in our lives. Father, may we be responsible people. We, may we be good examples of Jesus Christ wherever we go, especially in the workplaces, and represent you well. Not bringing shame to your name, but bringing glory to your name. Father, we thank you for what you're doing here today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everybody, thank you for joining me again here at Crossfire Worship Center. Be sure to join me again next Sunday at the same time. God bless you.